Now, what gives stocks value ultimately is that stocks have earnings. They are businesses. When you're buying a stock, you're buying a fractional ownership of a business. And as an owner of that business, you are entitled to your proportionate share of the profits of that business. Now, companies can share the profits in two ways. One, they can pay you a dividend. They can write a check and send it out to all the stockholders and you get your dividend. Nobody has to buy the stock after you. The price of the stock never has to go anywhere because you just get the dividend. So you're not depending on another buyer for that investment to have a return. The investment generates a return because the stock pays a dividend. Now, some companies may not use their earnings to pay dividends. They could use their earnings to buy back their own shares, in which case that will drive the share price higher. But you don't need another third party to buy the stock. The company itself is using its earnings to buy back its stock, and it may do that if it feels that giving its shareholders a capital gain is a more efficient way to distribute earnings than paying out a dividend. But what you have to remember is that what is giving the company the value is the earnings. Now, yes, there is a speculative component because there are stocks that don't have any earnings, yet people still buy them. So they don't pay dividends and they can't buy back their own stock out of earnings. They can buy it back by issuing debt, which is what a lot of them do. Uh, But there, they don't have the earnings. But what people are doing when they buy those stocks is they are betting that those stocks will have earnings in the future. Now, maybe they're betting wrong, but if they bet right, it's those future earnings that are giving the stock value today. Even though it doesn't have any earnings now, it's the potential for future earnings. Now, during a bubble, sometimes investors lose sight of rationality and they're actually buying companies that really never have uh, a shot at really making any money. And in the short run, nobody cares. And so part of that speculative mania in stocks is helping to confuse a lot of the younger investors that don't have much experience as to what stocks are and to thinking that it's all just one big casino and it's all about the price going up. It's not. Stocks are about earnings and they're about dividends. Yes, the price can go up, but the price should only go up because the earnings are going up or because the dividends are going up. Now, stock multiples can go up, right, based on interest rates, but ultimately the multiple is a function of the earnings. Without the earnings, the company is worthless. Yes, a company with no earnings today can have value to the extent that investors believe that there'll be earnings in the future. But if a company never actually delivers on that promise and it never earns any money, it eventually will go out of business and be worth zero. And the people who were betting that it would have earnings bet wrong. Now, the same is true with real estate. When you buy real estate, you can rent it out and you could collect your rental income, right? So you don't buy real estate needing another buyer to generate a return. You get the return from renting out the property or you can use the property yourself. And then the return is you get to live there. You get to enjoy it. You have a place to live or you have a place to vacation or something like that. Or you can buy real estate and you can farm it. Right? You could do something with the land to generate a return. You don't have to depend on the price going up. Now, you can buy land to hold it for appreciation. You can choose to speculate in land, but what's going to make the real estate appreciate is if it is more valuable to another buyer because now he can build something on it and get a higher rent or he can build his own house or something is going to have to happen to increase the value of that land between the time you buy it and the time you sell it, right? It, it's not just going to be endlessly flipping unless something changes. But ultimately, what gives that land value is the future income that can be generated by using the land for some productive purpose, whether it's you know building a house or an apartment or an office building or a shopping center and collecting rents or farming it or mining it or whatever you're going to do with it. But it's going to generate a return. Same thing with bonds, right? You buy a bond, you get interest, right? All investments have a return. Stocks pay dividends, real estate pays rent, 
and bonds pay interest. Now, normally, now, yes, I understand there are some negative yielding bonds right now, which is why it's all absurd. And I guess in a world of negative yielding bonds, you could try to justify Bitcoin. But negative yielding bonds are an aberration. They're only a function of central bank manipulation. Without the central banks, interest rates would be much, much higher. Look, a bond with a negative yield is worthless. Even a bond with a zero yield is worthless. I mean, why would you lend money to get no return? What's the point of making the loan? You're taking risk and you're getting nothing. Do something else with your money. So negative yielding bonds or zero yielding bonds have no value. A negative yielding bond where you're paying somebody to borrow your money makes even less sense. But, you know, this is what the Fed is doing. The Fed is basically corrupting uh, the investment market uh, with its manipulation. And it's getting people to think, well, Bitcoin at least is better than a negative yielding bond because at least the yield on Bitcoin is zero. And that's better than having a negative yield. But you can't have a zero yield on something that has no value. It's okay to have no yield on gold because you can use gold to do something. You can make something out of gold. It's okay to have no yield on wheat because you can eat it, (laughs) because you can consume it. But ultimately, you can't have no earnings on a stock because a company that makes no money has no value. You can't have land that doesn't throw off any rent or any other income because ultimately it has no value. And you can't have a bond that doesn't pay any interest. But Bitcoin is not an asset because it doesn't generate income. Therefore, it can't pay anything. And it's not a commodity because it can't be used for anything. and It can't be consumed. And it's certainly not money, right? Because it, it would have to be a commodity to be money. At best, it is a money substitute, except it's not used as a mean of exchange because it's too volatile and too expensive. But at best, it's fiat. It's fiat digital currency or a wannabe fiat digital currency because it's not actually used as a currency. It's just pure speculation. And people are going to be very um, upset (laughs) when they ultimately find out how much money they lose in Bitcoin. And they're going to have to come up with a new term because Bitcoin, you know, it's not really a Ponzi scheme. It's not really a pyramid scheme. It's got elements of both. And so I think in the future, they're going to have a whole new word in the lexicon uh, and it's going to be a Bitcoin scheme. And the Bitcoin scheme is going to, you know, incorporate all of the various things that are going on today in, in, in Bitcoin to apply it to schemes in general that may be following the same playbook.